Ah. Uh. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Morning Guard. Hello, how you doing today? And I want to thank. Uh, let's get it out there, Mr. Food Farmers Permaculture. Thank you very much for checking out my video and sending the feedback. Also, Miss Sue Miller. Thank you very much. She said, "Enjoy your day." I appreciate that. Um, I'm here. Uh, didn't catch anything today fishing. That's fine. That's fine. I got a chance to go out there, get on the water, and just relax. And it's got me thinking more about uh, my boat. I think I'm going to start working on it again. You know, start working on it again. Um, I want a reliable uh, wood motor, and I have a big... Um, what is that called? Uh, Yamaha 150. And it's just, I just want it reliable. I don't want to ever go out on water and go, oh, it won't start. I don't want to do that. That's too, that's too much stress. Um, and my garden is looking good. I, I spent a lot of time today in the garden. Um, and I got all my plants up here. And that's, uh, uh, that those plants are going to uh, be set out to uh, get food in the house, fresh, fresh food. Um, and a part of my conversation today is going to be about how technology is affecting the garden. I guess, uh, you know, uh, I saw some videos today that were incredible. They showed all the new um, uh, uh, robotics that's going to be implemented into the uh, farming age. Already implemented a lot of them, but um, right now they at they at this I call it wonky stage where they 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 work okay they just about get the job done but they're not really hitting the ball uh, home. But here's what they said: they said man will someday be a second quote unquote fiddle to the robots that'll be working on the farms. And the great thing about the robots is that they pointed out was that they never get tired. They they can work throughout the day and throughout the night. They don't they don't have to take a break or rest or anything, and uh, complain about what days they're getting off and uh, that they have a baby and they, they you know have to stay home for a period of time <clears throat> to bond with the child. Robots <clears throat> and, and the videos all over the place. Actually, if you go look at the uh, robotics in the farming industry, another one is. They got this is this great little deal that for gardeners is called the uh, green turtle, the green turtle. It rolls around the garden as long as it has to, and it um, kills weeds by uh, decapitating them with like a like a weed trimmer uh, uh, a cord. And I'm looking at that. And I'm saying, wow, but. They didn't show it really tackling really thick weeds. They didn't show that. They didn't show that. And they showed how it could dis distinguish weeds from your crop so it wouldn't be chopping them down. And it showed these little barriers that you put in your yard uh, at certain points around. It's like a wire that, that goes around your, your uh, items that you don't want chopped down. And it saves them from being treated like weeds. Um, but I thought that was fascinating a, a bit, but but it showed the robot cleaning weeds out of pretty much a, 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 a clean yard. And it wasn't it wasn't a real thick yard. I mean, like if, it, if you put it in my yard, that's the test because it ain't going to go around that yard chopping everything now. Um, it'll wear it out. Um, and it showed how they build like it's like a big square out of wood or some kind of material that allows it to basically be kept in the, so it doesn't wander off anywhere in the woods or wander off down the street. Um, it, it, uh, it's called a green turtle. And and I'm, I'm looking at that and I'm going, wow. I said, that is interesting. The, and now the, the, the inventor of it did have some things to say about the fact that um, it's not perfect. 
and it wasn't perfect and it does have some errors it does have some errors and one is that um is that sometimes there's like one or two uh, excuse me it was one or two um plants that it gets confused as a weed and so that was interesting that they, they told the truth about it and i thought that it was just incredible little uh device and it just it just just starting out um now you got the the robots that'll cut your lawn and it was based on that principle it was based on that principle it's like a, it looked like a, a a robot carpet uh a cleaner a vacuumer or something that's what it looked like but it was green and had these these wheels they showed it it can operate in muddy areas it could operate when it's raining it could operate when it's when it's hot and burning up outside and you don't have to have it plugged in or anything like that it doesn't have to go back to a recharging station or anything of that nature all it does is run off of a a board that's on top that collects the sun and also they said it has the ability to be charged as well but I don't see that uh, being really significant because it just didn't look like it it could take out a really weed crap type of yard. It, it, it doesn't look like that. Oh my goodness. I, I said, I looked at my yard today. I went in it and, and it looked around and I had a good time out there cutting the grass. I, I was very lucky. I, I have a hundred foot holes out there. I had for years. It's a craftsman, beautiful holes, heavy duty, uh, lifetime warranty on it. And I almost ran over it with, with my, um, what they call that thing with my, my with my, um, lawnmower. And it was, it was, it was just, it was just crazy because it, 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 uh, I ran over it and it was okay. Folks, I will be right back. I got an alarm going off in the uh, other area of the house. I'll be back. When they saw it, when they saw it, uh, leave away. Uh, God, these alarms are everywhere going off. Now, in this house today, it is so warm to my plants. I got the heat on. And, and these plants are doing real good. Real good. All those tomato plants I grew and, and it might have cost me 25, 30 cents. I love that. They call beef, beef steaks, tomatoes. And then I got some uh, Roma tomatoes. They're always good to grow. It's a quiet night tonight on online. Quiet now. Hello, how you doing? Starting the same. Yep, that's what I'm doing. I'm I'm, I'm putting it in the ground because uh, w once you let it get too late in the year, there'll be no time to do it. So I'm getting it done now. I want to grow, even though it's summer, I want to grow some collard greens. So I got those uh, set up and, and they're growing in trays i got the collard green i got the i got the kale and i got some of the um tree tree collards that's good and i took some bigger uh fruit i mean some bigger uh 
containers and I got some uh, melons in those. Uh, oh, that's what I meant to put in. I keep forgetting. I'm not going to forget tonight. I'm going to put in some, um, what they call it. I'm going to put in some uh, uh, pumpkin. I'm going to put in pumpkins because pumpkin is a beautiful fruit. And I'm going to save the seeds from them because the seeds were given to me and I'm going to use them. These plant looks really good. I'm gonna show it to you. I'm testing out this um, this fertilizer. Look at this, folks. This was all just cuttings. And see the little points right here. Uh, wait, a minute, right here. These were not on there when I when I did these cuttings. See right here, all these cuttings. You know what's in here? I'm gonna tell you what's in here. This is gonna be crazy in a couple more days. In another week or two, it's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be all out the cup. I'm not gonna be able to contain it. I'm gonna have to uh, go buy some pots for it. Uh, this is nothing but simple. Uh, oh, this it got the roots on it now. Didn't have roots on it at first. Yep, it's got roots. And they came out on their own. Um, I could have grew it without, but but I love the fact that uh, um, I got, let me see what I got. I got this miracle Grow, And I said, let me see what this stuff is, how, how thorough this stuff is. Miracle Grow is thorough. Miracle Grow is thorough, but you got to be very, very, and I mean very, 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 very um, cautious with it. Do not put more than what the directions say. Don't do it. Say, I'm going to put a little extra more in there to, um, to make sure that this plant grows well. Don't do it. It'll burn it up. My neighbor was picking collards and kale in December. Yeah, I've done that. I've done that. Not that. Not a lot, but but I've done it. Um, but I got to tell you. Oh, okay. Did you catch anything, Miss Sue? I did not catch anything, but I did. But I didn't mind. Um, I'm driving. They're going. Oh God. Oh God. Gas is a million dollars. Oh God. I said. I said. I gotta. I hope I catch something because I'm, I'm wasting this gas going all the way up here. But then I thought about it. I said, wait a minute. You're not wasting the gas. You're enjoying going up here. You're enjoying being outside while you're off work today. You're enjoying yourself out here with all the birds. Hey, let me tell you something I saw. I want to tell you guys something. I want to tell you this. I couldn't believe it. I'm driving by. I'm looking over at the woods. And I see these. <clears throat> now, we're used to uh, we're used to seeing green everywhere when you know the weather breaking like it is now. I saw trees that were pink. I saw trees that were red. And and they're the trees that we bought at the uh, the plant stores years ago, probably. Birds would come eat it, the seed. And expel them in areas in the woods, and these trees are coming up. I mean, they were pink. I mean, every blossom on it was open, and it was incredible. It was about two stories high, and it was all pink. And I said, "Where did this? Where did this tree come from?" Now, these trees are the same one you see in. The stores when you go to the to, to, to the uh, the nurseries, but who would have thought that somehow nature, which is the original farmer, the original gardener, would actually ingest the seeds, ex <clears throat> expel the seeds, and then they would grow. Another example: I see trees growing in my yard that never grew there before. I don't even know what kind of trees they are. I look at the leaves, I go, wait a minute, where did this come from? Birds, 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 squirrels. They, they, they eat seeds. And nature set it up that way so that they can always make sure the trees and things will always move around. You are right. Yeah, yeah, these, these are... 
these trees are a different color. Red, brilliant red. Some of which there was trees out there were brilliant red. And I looked at that and said, oh my goodness. Now, because I always find myself curious and studying anything and everything that, that deals with plants, uh, neighbors I have that bought the house across the street. Um, they have, um, uh, oh God, what's the name of that tree? Uh, everybody tries to get Japanese maple. They got in, in the front yard. Somebody put it in there because I don't ever remember that, that that maple being there. And they got it in the front yard. And and I know I know the house because uh when the other neighbor used to live there, I, I went over there and, and, and I and I planted some um some rose bushes. But here's the deal. The maple is in the hardest soil is on earth, that, that soil. It's the same soil that I have. Only difference is my soil has been docked up with lots of years of giving up uh, compost and giving up uh, wood chips and everything. And it, it's, it, the soil is better. The soil he has is just packed tight, been like that for years. Only thing that grows in it is, uh, is grass. And the, he used to take the grass and he would cut it and he would take it somehow and throw it away. He would throw it away. And a lot of times I would ask for his grass. Uh, I say, what are you going to do with that uh, grass, Mr. Bill? And and he would say, well, I'm always, you know, just to get rid of and, and I started getting his grass clippings and putting them on my property around my, my vegetable plants, around my fruit trees. Um, and he didn't understand why I was doing this. He said, my neighbor, it's crazy. Yeah, something wrong with him. Don't say nothing. Don't make any sudden moves when you're around him. But uh, I, I, um, I get those materials because all I want to know, in which I always knew that he never sprayed his stuff. He never sprayed it with any kind of treatments. I knew that. My neighbor next door to him sprayed his stuff. So I never asked for his grass clippings. Um, I used to ask him for his um, uh, leaves off of his tree. And he used to have a lot of leaves off of his tree. And I would go right across the street. It would take me a long time to um, to put those leaves in place because it was just so many leaves. He would bag them up. No, he would put them in big cans. Or sometimes he would, if he didn't feel like it, he would say, I'll tell you what. Uh, he said, you you put them in a can and I'll let you have the leaves. I thought, okay, all right, I don't feel like doing it. You don't feel like doing it, but it's going to get done because I want to um, get those leaves. Yep, tell him to watch you channel. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I would like to, like to tell him to watch the channel. I'll tell you, man, it, it's... it's um, I'm having a good time uh, with, with rich soil like I have. I have soil that's further back in the back of my yard. It's so pretty. It was never like that when I first um, I came to this house. It was never like that. It was all this uh, uh, grayish uh, 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 clay soil that it was it was worms in it, but it was those little pathetic little tiny worms that that you know yeah. But then I started adding leaves and I started adding wood chips and I started adding um any kind of organic matter that I could add I used to buy a big I said when I first started gardening here um I used to buy all these bags of of of, of manure wasting my money wasting my money three three fifty bag then it went up to four four dollars a bag and I kept trying to get them and I said, look, I can't keep this up. I said, I can't keep this up. This is a big garden. And I make multiple trips. I did it one year. I, I, I mean, it, it, I got a video on it where it shows in the dead of winter. I was, I was, it, the bags I brought, the manure I brought here was, the manure I brought here was 
frozen in a bag. It also had tons of weeds in it. I found it out later. It had tons of weeds in it, um, some kind of weird weeds. And I said, okay, all right. I said, this has got to stop. I don't like doing it this way. And then I looked around and I started noticing that I had everything on my property I needed. I had all the organic matter on my property I needed. I just had to look and it was right there. The grass that grew on my property, sometimes four feet tall. And I, and I said, wait a minute, chop it, chop, chopping it down and let it lay right where it was. Um, tree trimming, left it right behind or, or alongside the trees, let it rot down, brought some of it over to the uh, compost pile, poured dirt in the middle of the, the, um, the tree limbs, and it rotted them down before you even knew what happened. The biology was just eating those trees' uh, limbs up. I would go back and look, and wherever the soil was laying on it for months, it would it would it would be it would break the, it would be you could snap it in half because the the biology was eating eating it up. So I looked at that and I said, wait a minute, look at this dark rich soil. That, I mean, this dark rich that looked like soil coming from the branches that I poured dirt on top of or soil. And when I did that, I said, wait a minute, if I'm getting wood from my trees, help feed my trees, and I'm getting grass clippings and weed cuttings from my garden to pour around my, my plants like tomatoes and cucumbers and, and uh, uh, that sort of thing, I said, why am I buying uh, manure? And it stopped just like that. That stopped because it was a waste. It was a total waste of money. I would, I would go get these heavy bags. I would bring them home. They were incredibly heavy. And I was like, you know, this, this, I couldn't keep that up. I just couldn't keep it up. The cost and how heavy it was. And I used to go get my bags of uh, manure in the dead of winter when they were when the bags were frozen, like a block of cement was in the bag. And that's how that's how hard the bags were. And I'd stack them, stack them, and then I look at the bill and I said, "Wow, I hope this grow a crop this year." And it wouldn't do any different. It wouldn't. It didn't do any different. So I said, "Okay." Then when I started using my grass clippings. And I started using the weeds. Everything grew. Everything grew. I started seeing uh, tomatoes with the brightest reds, the sweetest taste. And I said, got it. Nature was showing me all along. I just was doing it man's way, which was go to the box store, get some stuff. Go to the um, some other site and bring in some stuff and pay for it. I remember one time I was thinking of an idea, which was uh, find out how much topsoil I needed and bring a whole truck in here and have them dump it. And I'm glad, thank you, Lord, I did not ever do that. I heard the tragedy stories <clears throat> of some people who did that. And, and the stories were they brought in soil that was hard as, hard as crap. It was hard like clay. Um, and clay is all right if you, if you know how to work with it. Clay is good soil if you know how to work with it. Most people do have clay soil. Um, but back at it, as I was saying, the soil they brought in would be full of weeds. And they charge you for it. It would be full of weeds and grass and seeds and everything. And you put it down, and all of a sudden, you fight the nightmare of just seeds. And now, I know how valuable weeds are and how valuable grass is. It's valuable. Nobody wants you to, um, nobody really wants you most of the time we get really good 
and gardening. If 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 I if I owned if I owned a Lowe's and I sold uh, fertilizers and weed killers and and I sold things like that, I wouldn't want you to know about. Uh, if I was that type of person, I would not want you to know about how valuable weeds are to grow in your crops. I wouldn't want you to know that. I want you to buy the weed killer. I want you to buy the um, the uh, uh, all the chemicals that do this and do that. And I want you to keep buying the fertilizer. I want you to keep buying that stuff so I can keep my BG, my, my gas electric on. Yeah, uh, well, if you if you're giving uh, manure away, um, <clears throat> excuse me, and you have ample supplies of it, because I tell you what, I like I like certain manures. If I were to use them, rabbit manure is king. It's it's crazy, right? Um, horse manure uh, is hot. You gotta let it. You know, you already know that. Horse manure is hot, um, and it's full of all kind of weed seeds. Um, you get some weed seeds and cow cow manure too, but not as many as. Uh, good evening. Uh, but not as many as horse. Horse only has one stomach, and that allows him to only eat it once. Good evening, and this is a. Uh, Yeah, that's a good thing. If you stop buying fertilizer, you can do that because there's no, it's no, it's no point in it. I mean, if you do it, um, if you got the money, you know. But you compost everything. That's a good deal. That's a good deal. Um, and there's some really good things you can use in compost pile: weeds, grass, leaves. And it goes on and on and on. And then if you put it in a spot and you let the worms get in there on it, now it's full of worm manure. Yeah, yeah, leaves, leaves are definitely good. And, and the reason for that, a lot of people know that trees, some of them have very long tap roots, and they bring up all these minerals, and it and it and it goes up through the trunk, out through the branches, and into the leaves, and it drops it. And then it goes back into the ground and, and completes completes that cycle again. I do treat. Uh, yeah, yeah, composting is definitely the way to go. Hi, morning uh, and company. Only oh, morning guardian company. I, I cannot see folks. No, that's not the problem. It's just my eyes. Uh, at, at any rate, um, hello, how you doing there, Mr. Price? Always a pleasure. I just bought my uh, food scraps. I just buy my food scraps. Wait a minute. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, you could do that. Um, I'm gonna tell you something. Anything that is organic, anything that is organic is food for your garden. Anything that's organic. Plants, are, if you remember this one thing, if you get nothing out of my uh, sites other than this, if you get nothing else out of my sites ever, always remember this. If you remember that plants are identical to you, they just can't walk around and they can't talk verbally. They need to eat and they need water, and they need sunlight. 
Well, thank you, Mr. Price. I'm glad uh, that somebody's glad to hear and see me again. Uh, I've been away for a while uh, taking care of things, but I am uh, I'm, I'm doing these shows because a good friend of mine, and uh, she knows, uh, she told me, uh, she said, you need to do your morning garden show. You need to do it, get back on track, and get things back the way they were. You need to, you need to do that show again. And I said, yeah, I, said I haven't given it up. I said, but, you know, and it was, it was you know, and I, I got back to doing it. It's, it's a long story short. And it feels good. It feels good. I like my little sign here, too. <laughs> yeah, I kicked out a couple of dollars for that. I said, I don't want to get my little sign. I tried all those uh, backgrounds. I have no idea how to operate that stuff. Um, I tried the backgrounds that they have, uh, at, at what they call Zoom, uh, whatever. I don't have no idea um, how to operate it. I am glad you are back. Oh, thank you, thank you. Um, and I never, and, and, and now that I got it back, uh, I mean, now that I, I, I tried to get the background in the back, but it was just too hard. I said, "What is going on here?" I kept trying to download the app and all this, and I said, "This is not, this is not for me." Then I saw people out there; they made it real easy. It was, and they said, "I changed my background. I changed it this and changed it that and changed it to this, and and it just looked good." Um, you can put a little a clipping of your video behind. It could be your backyard, or it could be, um, it could be a still shot picture uh, that's behind you. And you just got to make sure that the subject, like right now, is lit. Like right now, there's a really bright light in front of my face. Uh, you know, so that that it, that uh, allows me to uh, not be all dark on the screen. I'm just looking at something here. Uh, pop, pop out chat. Okay, I see who's there. And I see a couple of my coworkers made their own fertilizer with fish. Yeah, yeah, you could do that. I mean, and I'm going to tell you something. I used to tell people that if you go to uh, any of those really big fish markets, um, you could you could load up the ver the hole each each hole you put in uh, behind your tomato or your cucumber or whatever. You put the fish heads and the fish in the fish innards in the hole and then cover. But here's the problem. There's so many, in some areas, there's so many animals that could find that very appetizing that you put it there. They'll smell it. They'll smell it for miles and come into the area to eat that. And if you if you put it deep enough and, you know, and you put uh, some lime on top of it, it kind of kills the smell. I mean, you know, it's, you still you still got a ways to go. Uh, um, yeah, I've done it. I've tried it. I've tried it. Yeah. Um, know that it works, but you got to remember. It, it, see, that's the thing about it. Anything, just remember that. Anything that is organic uh, will, in fact, fertilize plants. Plants don't do anything but eat uh, energy. It's nothing but a pump, and it pumps uh, in uh, all kinds of uh, nutrients from the soil. And the nutrients get in the soil because whatever was alive, when it's dead, it eats it. It's like uh, if you ever drive by, you'll never be the same again, I'll tell you this. Um, if you ever drive by a graveyard, look at the size of the trees in the graveyard. Just look at this, the massive size of some of the trees. 
And why is that, some people would say? Because they have a good food source there. What goes in the ground is nothing but fertilizer to a tree. The bones, the body that was once there is now uh, broken down uh, over a certain period of time. And the trees take those massive roots and they go over into those areas and they go into those metal boxes, which rot away eventually. And they go in there and they eat to their heart's delight. They are trees. They don't care where the nutrients come from as long as they can get it. My um, um, peach tree is in bloom. My uh, cherry tree is also in bloom. I don't know what happened. I used to be so excited about my cherry trees. Oh, please let them let them, let them produce cherries. Let them do. And they did. And and after a few years of eating them, I'm like, eh. But uh, I still, you know, because what, what turned me off about them, I, I got to tell you like this. If you don't do something about uh, the fact that insects love uh, cherries, I had one year when it was seen, it seemed like, there was a white worm in every single cherry that I grew. And it would leave like a little dark pinhole in the cherry. And when you break the cherry over with your hand, you see a white worm right around where the uh, seed is. And I said, what is going to open another one? And open another one, and another one. And I just kept opening. I said, they're in all of them. And that kind of turned me off because I knew then that there was an insect that hibernated around the base of the tree in the winter and also throughout the tree. And when the weather breaks, they go up. And when these uh, fruits start developing, they go right into them. Yep. One year there was a white worm in almost every single cherry. When I first started growing cherry uh, cherries, I never knew anything about anything like that, that that would happen. And I said, oh, my goodness. Now, I don't spray my fruit. I don't spray my fruit. And it had me thinking about spraying my fruit because fruit, because apples take a beating too. Apples do. They always got the little pinhole in them. Something and I went in there and laid his lava, 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 lava a worm basically in the uh, inside the apple. And it's eating the apple. And you got to be careful when you're biting into it because, you know, unless you, I mean, you know, you don't mind that little extra dosage of protein. Because that's all a worm is. What about surround? Ah, uh, let's see. What is this? this here? What what about surround? WP. I don't know what the WP is. Uh, crop protection. Ah, uh, let's see. Uh, so, oh, okay. Soon as my cherry trees. At, uh, my last house had those worms. Yep. Those little bastards. Those worms are little bastards. They were in there. All my pretty cherries I waited all year. And and it and the tree had the audacity to be so full of treats, to be so full of uh cherries that year. I could not believe that they were ruined because of all the worms that was in them. And that whole tree was full of um was full of was full of chairs. Food fathers permaculture. Hello. So you want fishing? Yeah, yeah, I went fish. It didn't do anything. Um, it, it it didn't do anything. But um, I, you know something? I kept looking at the water. 
because I'm up like I'm up like on a bridge fishing and, and I'm, I'm looking at the water and I'm saying, you know, back in the day, I remember when fish were very active. You would see them break on the water. You would see them chasing each other around by breaking and popping and things in the water. None of that was going on today. You had like a uh, when you looked at the water, it looked like the wind was pushing it in a direction. OK, I saw that. Um, I saw no birds coming down, diving and hitting and going back. I saw none of that. So that told me uh, that that there were any fish active in that area. And I saw one guy um, that he caught one fish. It was like a crappie. But here's what gets me. He crowded me because, you know, and I know that's no big deal. Or some people, it's no big deal. But he crowded me. Um, first, he was, and, and the worst thing about it that I had a problem with was that he, he we came over almost right next to me, and he never spoke, said good evening or anything, or you know, uh, he said nothing. He just got next to me and looked at me and kept looking back and looking at my how I was rigged up and that sort of thing. And I'm looking at him and saying, Man, that, "That's kind of rude," I said, "Because I'm over here, all this room out here." I mean, we talking about, oh, my goodness. And and he came right next to me, blocked off one with a rod here and a rod here. And I said, I said, don't say nothing. I said, don't say nothing. Leave it alone. Let's see what's going to happen here. And eventually he left, you know. So I just thought it was interesting. That's how he, that's how he fished. I walk up to you I'm out there. Um, we had different etiquettes when we fish. Number one, we don't crew, we don't crowd anybody. Don't crowd nobody, especially if you don't know them. If it's a friend of yours, you might want to get closer to your friend. But don't don't a guy you don't know, never seen before. Don't don't crowd them because some people uh, go fishing. They're very particular about guarding their area and all that. It's, it's, it's insane, but they do. They guard their area. They think all the fish are right here in this one spot. No, they just don't want to get their lines crossed, tangled, and some of that gear is expensive, depending on what he's he's got rigged up on there. Uh, let's see, what about Serrano? Okay. My cherry tree, the last house. Uh, I just stopped looking in the cherry and just ate them. Oh, my goodness. You ate them. Oh, okay. Because every time I looked in them, I, I, that's the only thing that turned me off. That was it, uh, Miss Sue. That was it. Um, but it wouldn't have hurt me if I, like you said, you know, if I just ate them. It wouldn't have hurt me. These are just little white worms. Uh, let's see. Uh, see, we used a lot of plants. Early girl. Tomatoes. Cherokee uh, purple. Now, Cherokee purple. Is one of my favorite uh, tomatoes to grow. It's just that simple. Um, they are uh, heirloom, and they are pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. Um, and you said something here about early girl. I've never tried early girl. I've never tried them. Um, uh, let's see, tomatoes, honey maker. And so I'm a peach tomato. Let's see, that's funny. Yeah, uh, let's see. Let's see. We planted, we planted them in plastic cups, and we like to. Uh, okay, I got this. I got this. I had to catch up on some of them because y'all were sending them, sending them kind of fast. I appreciate them though. The only thing I don't like is that when when I record this and 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 and, and save it, and I try to go back and look at the uh, the, the broadcast. I don't see these words up there moving anymore. It's just, they're not there. And I'll be saying, yeah, I would like to look at them. When I go fishing, I put up no fishing and no trespassing. Oh, wow, you put up a no trespassing sign. No trespassing, wow. Maybe I'll go... There, where it is 
Appreciate it. Yeah, because I'm telling you, uh, it, it's it's a. Um, I see what what kind of fish is it in that water? It's all kind of fish in the water. Um, you got crappie, you got cat, a little catfish, about that long. Um, uh, rock, no, excuse me, not rock. Uh, what you call a uh, large mouth, small mouth, um, and and pickerel, uh, pike, and like that. That's what uh, mostly freshwater breeds. Yeah, and no one bothers me. Okay, that, that's that's a good idea because um, he got right up on me. Never opened his mouth. Never said good evening or nothing. He just came right over there next to me. And when I looked away and looked again, he was right next to me. I said, oh, my gosh. And I started to say, what, what, do you want me to leave? Uh, you know, but I said, no, don't, don't do that. Uh, live on the uh, ocean. There's lots of fish. I believe that. Because I got to go fishing one time in the ocean. But I went one time. It was, it was, it was up there, Ocean City we have here. And um, it was a, a, a fish that went by the dock that looked as big around as a, I always said he was big around as a, as a top of a Volkswagen a car. You remember those cars. And I looked at it, I said, what is that? And it had huge wings when it went by underwater and it just went down further. So I threw my line across it. And I felt my line tighten up and just break. And, and, and I knew what it was. It was a uh, stingray. That's what it was. Yep, that's what it was. That's what it was. It was a stingray. And no fish were around when this boy was in the water. How afraid are they of him? There was nothing there to catch. And then, and then in the rocks, they were little teeny, like that little, little, little grayish looking crabs look like you can't eat them they move too fast like they uh insects but they were crabs um uh, beautiful uh yeah yeah they are they're good looking uh animals but i threw that that line across them in, at, which was a jig and i hooked it in them and you got to remember this now i think i was using like eight pound test uh because i didn't know i mean eight pound test and he just it was just like a it was just like it was attached to a car. It just drove off and just broke the line. Put the crabs on a hook and tons of the, uh, in the ocean. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but he was he was a little teeny little crab, little teeny little thing. And I looked at him. I said, damn. I said, they, they look different from our, our crabs here in Maryland, which is blue crab. But we got different kind of crabs here. But that, that was... In the rocks, it was just crawled around it like it didn't need to be in the water. I said, "Wow, what is this? Look like a little insect." And he moved fast. You can see his eyes moving, and he would he would just crawl and put his claws up like that when you kind of get near. You know how the crabs do. Uh, so I said, "Let me leave him alone. He's got enough problems." Um, well. I guess he was cute, but uh, but he was he was a he was a little he was a little testy. I'll put it that way. And and I did do. I did get get able to get back home and and, and work back in the yard again. Um, I want to uh, sharpen my uh, lawnmower blade. I see. Yeah, yeah, fishing is something. Fishing is something. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Some people would have uh, put that crab right on the hook and see what would bite it. But nothing that day bit. Nothing. It was a situation where um, nothing bit. Not even bump, 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 nothing. And we were there for hours. We moved from one spot to another, and it's the same thing. And you have some days on the water 
where nothing's biting because with that ray in the area, how many how many of them were out there? We we don't know because yeah, but that thing was that thing was huge when it went by the dock. All I kept thinking about was that old classic movie Jaws when I saw it go by. And then then we looked. Uh, there was some kind of like caucus that floated in, and all it was was some kind of drum. And all it was was the head. Um, and it was a huge fish. And I said, "What happened to him?" And you know, so it was it was interesting. He had no body. And and in that water, I know there had to be all kinds of fish out there. Some of them that that, are, that, that have teeth that are that are vicious. Um, That's how that works. Nothing but fish that eat fish. And at that trip we took to go to uh, that fishing spot was three hours drive. Three hours. Ah, sharks. Yeah. And, 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 uh, so uh, I looked at it and I said, well, I'll be headed back home. And I went in the garden that, that night. And I picked me some uh, collard greens and um, kale. I had a habit of taking collard greens and kale and mixing them two together, cutting them up. And um, after uh, I put the meat on first, um, I washed and I and I clean uh, the collard greens and kale, and I and I and I put them in there and cook them. Onions and garlic, and and that's just a good deal. Um, speaking of garlic, I'm testing out a theory. Uh, I took some garlic and and purchased it at the Asian store, and I put it in water and allowed it to root and everything, just for the heck of it. Just having fun with the garlic. Um, and it grew and grew and it smelled up the room like garlic. And uh, I pulled all the parts, um, pulled all the clothes apart. And then I uh, I remember uh, Food Farmer's Permaculture saying one time, you get the biggest pieces of garlic from the biggest pieces. Smaller pieces, smaller garlic. But I said, oh, I'm going to plant it anyway because I just for the heck of it. And what I did was interesting, <clears throat> excuse me, what I did was interesting because I said, don't put the blunt end down and the pointed end up. Just drop the garlic on the ground, cover it with wood chips that have decayed for a year. I'm waiting to see what would happen with the garlic, because I'm only doing this for a reason. I say I planted hundreds of garlic. I live on much seafood, uh, for food, seafood. Yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness, he planted five hundred garlic. Yeah, how much in your your water? Uh, well, let's put it like this. Uh, if you put garlic, here's what I did. I took the whole bulb and I took a bowl that was relatively kind of wide, something like a bulb like that. And I set all five of them down in there and I put some water in there just enough to come up um, to where or past where the roots are. Left them in there. Within about three days, they started developing roots. And it would suck up all the water, and then the garlic would open up slowly, like it's getting ready to explode. Um, and then I took the garlic and um, left them in there too long. Got busy working, doing things around the house, and the garlic was just growing and growing and growing. I kept looking, 
Now it's starting to shoot up tops like this. So I said, you got to get this in the ground because if you if you don't, it's just going to be a complete waste. And uh, some of the garlic has uh, shallow root. This right, uh, lots of. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And, and and I taste them. I I um I put them in there, and once I put the garlic in there, I had. Like I said, put the uh, wood chips on top. It rained incredibly good, uh, and and the okay. Uh, what I did wrong. Uh, I don't know what you did wrong, but but if you give it a little water. Um, and it's just sitting there in the water, and I set the uh, garlic near window so it could get some light, and um, and I just waited, and it grew all of these beautiful roots. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. And I did that because I like garlic. I don't know if there's anyone in this room like garlic as much as I like garlic. But I like garlic because garlic is so healthy for you. That it's, and there's no place like it, it, it's, it's, it's so healthy for you organized. that garlic is, is just, I mean, it, it'll clean all type of um and, and i thought about it and i said wait it, it'll clean all kind of um well thank you very much <laughs> thank you germs yeah. that are in your body it'll clean those it's out expert. i'm trying to look for the word for it but um but right. it, it, it's called um yeah, we're host to back. something called uh, shit. i found at the korean store lots of animals that live in us and around us. Will be the most Garlic helps kill some of that. Do this for me. Go in the store, look up different brand names of. And there are so many different varieties of garlic. A fertilizer. Um, you should not be buying Put them at the wrong time of day. I'm, I haven't uh, found it. I haven't found it. This is the works and find out. I'm trying to find something here. Uh, I'll put them in tomorrow, actually. And they, wait a uh, minute. Garlic needs cold hours. See how dark it is. And and um, this is a picture of me holding uh, one of the garlics. I don't know if that could be seen, but it's all that hairy stuff on it is roots from the garlic, and all of it came out like that. It had so many roots on it when it finally kept growing uh, that I was like, this is... Um, See how this one came out? And all those are roots ready to go in the ground. Yeah, and see. This well, this one here is the one that has a, um, I'm just showing you so this one. amount of, of uh, roots on it, which is here. See the roots? And I'm going to put those in the ground. So. And I'm going to tell you something. Put them in tomorrow, actually. You grow, you grow. I never did put those in tomorrow. I I, I got caught up in things and and it just never got done until days later. And um and, and so when I put them in the ground, uh on top of the ground, excuse me, I never dug a hole or anything. I just laid them on top of the ground and laid the wood chips uh inch thick, uh or a little less than an inch thick, right on top of it, and that's how I left it. And it works. I'm waiting to see how much garlic survives. Uh, because even though it's not turned up so where the blunt end is down, I wanted to see how would it come up if it's turned sideways or something like that. I want to see. So if that works, um, uh, let's see. Uh, see, cooked pasta, olive oil, parsley. Garlic and walnut, salt, pepper, 
mix all together good eating <laughs> oh my goodness thanks sue yeah yeah that was that was uh, she put that together there sounds great I, I i gotta tell you um garlic oh i used to go to work and and it's females at work and, and, and females tend to have a greater sense of smell than men do they had there was so much garlic coming out of my pores i walked up to the desk and one of the co-workers said oh my god oh my god you've been eating that garlic that's what, that's what she said that's right it's smooth. It's yeah i'll i'll try it soon he, he, uh, i wrote i'll try it soon uh but the thing about it is um I mean, it's incredible garlic. So, so I did that, and and then I said, "Well, what else can you do in a garden that everyone usually makes? Uh, not everyone, but the majority of people make a big deal about it. And they go, oh, 'It's got to be done this way. It must be done this way. If it's not done this way, it, it, uh, it won't work. It won't work.' And I hear people say that all the time about certain things. And some things, yeah, yeah. Um, if I try to grow." tomatoes outside and it's 20 degrees and it's not in any kind of shelter. Yeah, the tomatoes most likely are not gonna do anything. Common sense. But if it comes to, uh, I'll, give, I'll give a good example. Um, keep the, away. Oh, okay, okay, keep the vampires away. Uh, here's what I wanna say. <laughs> here's what I wanna say. Um, oh God, I forgot what I want to say. Okay, you got the garlic. Um, they it was it was a seed, and and, and I'm watching uh, a video, and because I watch lots of gardening videos, I watch lots of gardening, and I and I like watching videos where they they show these like really third world country, I mean third world country, yeah, uh, uh, farmers. I love watching them. Because they, they'll be in there, and I don't know what they're saying. But the, but they, they, but, but that, the, but I'm not trying to be funny about it. But that's what it sounds like to me. And they are, they are growing everything from melons to uh, uh, to to cabbage to uh, collard greens, whatever, and they're doing it. And they're not going to a box store or none of that. And it looked like they're using something, look like rice that they're putting uh, in as fertilizer. And then I had one word come up there to say, uh, some of them say manure. And that's what they believe in. They believe in that manure. And I can't blame them because manure has nitrogen in it. And plants need nitrogen. One of the main things you'll find this soil suffers from not having is nitrogen. So at any rate, they'll tell you to take the seed of watermelon seed, and, and the pointy side must be up this uh, pointy side must be pointed down, and the, and the blunt side must be pointed up, and it, and it must go in that way. It's, it's the best way to put. It. No, it's not. No, it's not. Stop. Stop with the madness. Stop. You take the watermelon seed, you poke it in the ground. It don't have to necessarily be two inches deep and all of that. It don't have to be like that. It does not have to be like that. I've grown too many watermelons. I've grown too many cucumbers. I mean, I mean cantaloupe. And, and, and you don't have to jam them down in the ground a, 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 a half an inch. You don't have to do that. You don't have to. You can if you want to. I put stuff near the surface so it comes up. Yeah, yeah, that's right. They, they they make it they make it work. I saw a video that I'll never forget, and uh, it was a lady in a poor country that had no farm to, to plant anything at, and she was planting greens, cabbages, and and stuff like that in the cracks of a wall. 
Now, I said, oh, my God, that's determination. There were old cracks in the wall where some of the mason uh, sand had fallen out. And she was jamming them seeds in there with a little bit of uh, like a soil mix. And when they grow, she took care of them. And they grew these big, pretty heads of uh, lettuce and, and, and cabbage and all that. And it was all all down this wall. And I looked at that and said, that is insane. That is absolutely insane. And I had nothing, nothing but respect for her, the way she grew that. And that's how that works. That's how that works. I mean, um, I like to take when whenever somebody says, oh, it can't be done this way, it must be done that way. I, mean, I look at nature and nature does this. You could take a watermelon and throw it out into the yard, throw it out into the yard and some of them seeds next year come up on their own. You ain't got to bury them. You ain't got to. You ain't got to fuss over them. They'll come up on their own, and that's how that works. That's how that works. Birds eat seeds and expel the seeds on the surface of the ground. And what do the seeds do? grow. When it's time for them to grow, they grow. They don't have to be buried in the ground. Um, and I watch people constantly. There's some things about what people do as gardening that's right. It makes sense. It makes sense. And others make up stuff that they really don't understand and and that's, that's just the way it is. So on that note, I'm going to call it, folks. It's 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 uh, I like doing things uh, when I plant my uh, garden. I like keeping it simple. I like keeping it as, as little work as possible because, you know, I used to do all that digging and digging and digging with a shovel. I bought beautiful, I got beautiful tools out there uh, and found out that when it all came down to it, I didn't need all those tools. I did not need all those tools. That was years ago I bought those tools and didn't need them all. The, the biggest tool I bought was, it, like I said, the tiller. Uh, I didn't need that tool. I did not need it. It was destroying my soil and I didn't know it because uh, there was no one to tell me, and 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 I and I and I read books that said um, use ten 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 in the garden. It said use a tiller to till up the soil, and 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 so it was telling me wrong. It was a, it was a book that was a garden book, seven hundred and some odd pages, and some of the stuff was based on what man has been doing wrong for years. They teach you to grow things in a straight line all down like this in a straight line, taking up all that space that you can use to plant um, other things there. Then not only that, uh, that they tell you plant this way, they tell you, oh, I use 10, 10, 10. And it's very little, well, you know, some of them mentioned the, the compost. No one mentions wood chips or anything like that. That came later. No one mentioned using leaves for anything. It's it said that you can compost them, and then that's the only way to use them. And and some people were taking leaves and uh, covering them over, put down some potatoes on the ground and covering them over with the leaves, and then they grow a whole basket full of uh, uh, potatoes because of just laying leaves on top of them. Um, that's it. All, all, all the potato one is the darkness and the fertility, and the potatoes will do the rest. 
So that's how that works, folks. All right, good people. This has been The Morning Garden. Thank you very much for tuning in, and we'll see you later. Or I'll see you later. Yeah, yes, that makes sense. <laughs>